It's Jay and today I'm here with my May wrap up for 2019 part 2. I read a total of 10 books this month. If you want to see the first 5, it's in my part 1. This is the last 5 that I read for this month. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book I'll talk about in this wrap up is the graphic novel that I read. It's called Avant Garde. This is by Carly Usden and Noah Hayes and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows a girl named Charlie who transfers to George O'Keefe College of Arts and Subtle Dramatics and there she gets approached by a group of ragtag girls who want her to join their basketball team. And I I really enjoyed this. It's the first installment of I believe four graphic novels that are going to be released but it was so cute and a super fast read. I've personally been playing basketball since around four years old so a very very long time so I really liked the aspect of the basketball team. I also just really loved the characters. They were so unique and like relatable and funny and I just loved all of them. The diversity was really really well done. I really liked how we got a glimpse of every single character in the panels so we got to know their unique personalities and I'm very excited to see more of them in future installments. Charlie the main character was honestly really relatable. She's dealing with a lot of anxiety and I think that that rep was very well done. She's very moody and sarcastic which like can relate. Liv was the team captain and she's just so bubbly and adorable and dorky you couldn't help but like rooting for her. Ashley is the team coach and she was hilarious. I'm very excited to see more of her joking personality. Tiffany is a proud witch and I loved her so much. And then there's Nicole who is like the team bitch but like you can tell she's just super fierce and loyal and will stand up for those that she cares about. And then my my favorite character of all time is Jay and they love puppies and like they're just me honestly but like I said I think the diversity was one of the highlights for me they all had different genders body types styles religions like it was all just very well done in my opinion and I think that a lot of people are going to be able to see themselves in these characters I also loved how many different sexualities were portrayed in this graphic novel and there was even a non-binary character which I think is great to see for a lot of people and then I also want to highlight the art style it was so colorful and like you could tell that the artist took a lot of time to plan out the panels. Like at one point the panels made a basketball which I thought was like really cool because like the whole thing is about basketball and it was just like laid out so well. Highly recommend y'all check out this graphic novel when it's released. The next book that I have I'm not going to talk too much about since it is the third in a series but it is Before the Devil Breaks You by Liv Bray. This is the third book in the Diviner series which I love so much. I ended up giving this book a five out of five stars. Honestly we should not be surprised about this but I love this series so much. The characters are just so lovable and I loved seeing them again in this installment. I just love all the characters banter with each other and I honestly just fall for them even more every single book that I read. There's just so many plots and subplots that all get woven into this story but it's done in such an effective way that none of them seem like they shouldn't be there like everything flows so well i listened to this on audiobook like i did for the first two books so i highly recommend y'all check it out on audiobook if you haven't already because it just makes it such a better experience in my opinion so like I said, I just need the fourth book now. The next book that I have is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars as well. I listened to it on audiobook so maybe that is why because I know that a lot of people who read the book didn't enjoy it as much. It's a full cast audio which I am a huge fan of every single time there's a full cast. I usually rate the book very high. So if you're unaware, which I'm sure you're not unaware because this is a super hyped book, this follows Daisy Daisy Jones and the Six, which was a band popular in the 1970s who ended up breaking up. They never explicitly said 
why they broke up until now. It's basically told in interview format of all the band members and people that were close to the band and it was extremely extremely hyped up so I was very hesitant going into it but I'm very glad that I actually did pick it up because I ended up really really enjoying it. Like I said I listened to the audiobook version of this and I was just so invested in literally every single character in this book. I refuse to admit that this is not a real band. I honestly was like googling it to see if they were real because I was so convinced that there was no way this was fake. But turns out, no, they, they still do not exist. I really loved the interview style and how we got to hear from every single character because I thought it was really interesting to see the same event from different band members' perspectives and how differently they saw that time of their life. The relationships between each character and the band members was so complex and full of tension. I loved every moment learning about the band and what they were going through. I think that the addiction plotline was handled very well and I think that the author did a very good job not glamorizing it. I loved the relationship between Daisy and Billy. The tension was just so obvious and I loved seeing how they were so drawn to each other but both knowing that the relationship would be very toxic for each other. I also really liked the feminist undertones of this book. I think that all the female characters were very strong and independent and I loved the relationships that they had together as well. I think that the relationship dynamics between like Karen and Camila, Daisy and Simone, and even Daisy and Camila were so interesting to read. And honestly, that was one of the reasons why I couldn't put this book down because I wanted to know where it was going to go. It's very hard to make me cry with a book, but this one had me tearing up. I was so emotionally invested in the whole thing. And I would just like to point out that I want Aurora to be a real album, so if somebody wants to make that happen, I would highly appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I am a huge fan of this book. I definitely recommend you guys check it out on audio if you haven't. The next book I have is With a Fire on High by Elizabeth Esfeto, and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. It follows Imani Santiago, who became pregnant with her her daughter Emma in her freshman year of high school and ever since giving birth to Emma her life has been a constant cycle of work, school, and caring for the baby. The only time she can really relax and take a step back is when she is in the kitchen where she is able to create these dishes where other people taste them and it evokes personal memories of their lives. So when the opportunity for Imani to take a culinary class during her senior year of high school comes about, she jumps on the chance. I really did enjoy Imani as a main character. I think that she was very strong-willed and determined to achieve her goals and dreams and I really enjoyed how the idea of her being a teen mom wasn't thrown in your face as a bad thing. It was actually more of a story of saying like you are able to still live your life when you become a mother and I really liked that aspect. It was done in a very subtle way. I really liked how mature Amani was. I think that she was able to handle anything that life threw her way in a very reasonable manner. She was able to take a step back when she was feeling stressed out or just overwhelmed and deal with the situation in a very level-headed manner, which a lot of people are not able to do myself included, so I think that that was a really great thing to see. I really liked Imani's relationship with her grandmother and her daughter. I think that she just cared so strongly for them. I really liked watching Imani step into herself as the story progressed and how she realized that she can do what she wants and still care and be there for her daughter and her grandmother. It was just really nice seeing her finally put herself first for once and realize that she is able to obtain those dreams that she has while still caring for her family. I also really liked how short the chapters were because I have the attention span of a goldfish, so like 20 page chapters are not for me. These were like maybe five, six pages maximum, which I flew through. I also really liked the relationship between Imani and her best friend Angelica, they were just so loyal to each other and it was just really nice to see a female-female friendship that was actually healthy for once. The only major complaint I have for this book is the I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding line that was used like five times. I just hate that line so much. I also really hated the girl-on-girl -girl hate and slut-shaming in this. It just got old really quickly so was not a fan of that but other than that 
I did enjoy the book. And then the final book that I have for this part of the wrap-up is The Trader Prince by CJ Redwine and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is the third book in the Ravenspire series which I am personally a big fan of fairy tale retellings. This is a retelling of the Arabian Prince with a mix in of The Prince and the Pauper which I have never seen before so I was super excited about this. It follows Javon who is the crown prince of Akram who has been at school for the past 10 years trying to fulfill his mother's dying wish of being the top of his class. On his journey home, an imposter successfully takes his place, tricking his ailing father and those that he rules. Javon is thrown into the palace prison when no one believes his claims of being the true prince. So with the help of Saja, who is the warden's slave, he competes in the yearly tournament that occurs in the prison that will win him an audience with his father. So like I said, huge fan of fairy tale retellings. This one wasn't my favorite, but it might also be because I don't really know the story of the Arabian Prince. The other two were very familiar tales to me, so I was able to see the similarities. Like, The Wish Grander is Rumpelstiltskin, The Red Queen is the Snow White retelling. So I was able to see similarities between them, but since I don't really know this story, it was a little bit harder for me, which might be why I didn't enjoy it as much as the other two. I did find the book to be interesting entertaining. I really like the concept of the tournament and the creatures that Javon and the other inmates had to face, but it was a bit slow at times, which I wasn't a huge fan of. I just wanted to get back to the tournament, to be honest. I did really enjoy how short the chapters were in this one as well. Like I said in the last review, I have the attention span of a goldfish, so shorter chapters are definitely a highlight for me. I liked Saja more than I liked Javon, and I would have rather followed her instead of Javon. Javon kind of really pissed me off. He was just too good to be true. Like, he did not have a bad bone in his body and nobody is that good. Not even the crown prince. I'm sorry, like he would have done something that went against people's morals, but no, he was literally perfect. But I did like watching Saja and Javon learn to trust each other. I'm a huge sucker for friendship to lovers trope, so I was here for it. Overall, like it was a fun read, not my favorite in this series, but I am excited to pick up the blood spell, which is the fourth book in the series, not 100% sure if it's the last, but that's a retelling of Cinderella's, which is a tale that I know quite well, so I'm excited to pick that up. Alright guys, so that was my May part 2 wrap up. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these. Check out part 1 if you're interested, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!